Hi everyone, I am glad to have you back. In this video, we will solve the problems under the topic of strings in CodeKata using Python. And with no further delay, let's get started. This here is the first question that we are going to cover. And if you are unaware about the remaining questions, which are the last 6 questions, I would ensure that I provide a card above so that you would be able to access those tutorials. Ok, so in the first question, we are given with a string which consists of parentheses. And what we have to do here is that we should check whether all the parentheses in the given string is open and closed properly. And if no parentheses is left open or closed, we term the string as balance and we should print 1, else we print 0. I guess the logic to this code is pretty simple and let's start to code. To begin with, we get an input n, obviously as the data type string. And we declare two variables r and m as 0. These variables here play a major role of counting the open and close parentheses respectively. Followed by the variable declaration, we declare a for loop in the range of the given input. To be more specific, we map each value of the input obtained to the variable i and we check whether the variable is open or closed parentheses. And we increment the value of r and m respectively according to the format. Up to now, we have incremented two values r and m where r consists of the parenthesis which is left open and m consists of the parenthesis which is closed. In order to obtain the balanced condition, the number of open parenthesis and closed parenthesis should be equal. Thus here, if the value of r and m is equal, we print it the string is balanced. Hence we print 1, else we print 0, remarking that the string is imbalanced. And we summon the code and we head to the next question. In the second question of this video, we are given with a rather weird question stating that in a country, the car's engine number depends upon the car's number plate. And here, the engine number is the sum of all the integer values present in the car's number plate. So the issuing authority has hired us in order to get the input as a string and give back the sum of the integer values or the engine number here. As a common approach, we here use the input of string variable or the string data type in order to obtain the number plate. After we have declared a as an input variable, we declare or in order to calculate the sum of the integer value in order to find the engine number. There are many probabilities to solve this question. But yet for our simplicity, we stick to an easy method in order to solve this question. So as you have guessed, we declare a for loop where i maps to each value of the string present in the variable a or the obtained input. And we declare an if loop where we check if the obtained string is in the character 1 to 0. Thus we filter each integer value by using an if condition statement and checking it against an string consisting of the numbers and we increment or to the integer variable or to the integer value of i or else we continue. You could question why should we check it against a string declared with number system. In order to replace that, we could use the try and expect method where we would try and check if the given value is an integer. If the condition fails, we continue. If the condition passes, we increment the value of r or else we check the next number. And finally, we print the value of r, which would be the sum of all the integer values present in the obtained string. Hence, we would print the engine number. And thus, we summon the code. And we move on to the next question. And in this question, we are provided with a string followed by two integer values. Where the string consists of both the uppercase and lowercase letters in various positions. And what we have to do here is that we should convert each letter of the string present in the multiple of the integer value present in the second line either to lowercase or uppercase depending upon the variable present in the last line. In the last line if the variable is 1 or the integer value is 1 we have to convert it to the lowercase or we have to convert it to the uppercase. The coding part here would be a little bit of mess so we will cover each line one by one. To begin with we declare a as a variable which inputs the string in the first line and we declare t and p to get the input of the two integer values where t is the variable res responsible for mapping the index position in the obtained string and a variable p is responsible for type conversion of the character or alphabet and after the input part we initialize an empty array in order to store the alphabets and to produce a final output 
we could also declare a empty string value and increment each alphabet to it and we could print it at the end and so to begin with we convert the input string a to a list in order to separate each alphabet present in the given string and using an if condition statement we classify the two possible outcomes which is the type conversion for lowercase and uppercase using 1 and 2 and we declare a for loop in the range of the length of the inputter string divided by the value of p the length of the input string is 7 and the value of p is 2 in this case we do so in order to iterate and convert only the alphabets present in the multiples of the integer value p and we convert the resulting float value into input value we could do so by using the apps value or integer function for each respective if loop thus we would initialize each alphabet present in the index position which are the multiples of p as lower or upper according to the corresponding cases in the if loop and thus we would print all the variables present in the array using the for loop if you had declared a empty string we could simply print the string in order to yield the output and we will submit this code and move to the next question The fourth question we are about to cover is a pretty simple one where we have to get an input and we should reverse it and output the string where we should print the first value in uppercase. So in order to do that we declare a as an input variable to obtain the string and, and we simply slice the string variable using the index slicing function and we use the built in function dot capitalize in order to print the first alphabet in uppercase. And now let's move to the next question. In the 11th question we just have to get an input and we should print the same. So we declare n as an input variable and print and print n. Thus we submit our code. In the 6th question we should obtain an input of string and check if it has any vowel present in it. And if it does we have to print s else we would print no. So we declare a as an input variable and we declare or is equal to 0. Here we would use OR in order to calculate the number of vowels present here due with an FOR loop and IF loop. And we declare a FOR loop where the variable i maps to each value of a in each respect to iteration. And we declare an IF loop where we would check if the alphabet is a vowel and if the condition is true we would increment the value of OR. Hence we would know if there is any vowel present in the given string. And if the OR value exits 1 or is greater than 0 we print s else we print no thus we would submit this code in the seventh question of this tutorial we are required to get an input of a string and print it by changing the middle element to the asterisk symbol if the length of the string is even we have to change both the middle elements by placing it to the asterisk else if the length is odd we have to replace the middle element to one asterisk so let's step into the code with reference to the question we declare s as an input variable to obtain the string and using a floor division operator we separate the length of the string to two equal halves and we store the value to d we use floor division operator in order to get a integer value if the string is odd excluding the float or the decimal part thus we declare if loop condition where we check if the length of the string is even we limit the variable up to the middle two elements and we add the asterisk sign and again we add the characters from the second middle element up to the last element else if the length is odd we, we first print the alphabets from the first index position to the number d and we add asterisk symbol later we add remaining elements from d plus 1 as we should exclude the element present in the center here instead of replacing we just limit the string and use the index slicing operation in order to produce the output we could also achieve the produce of the code by replacing the middle elements to the asterisk thus we submit the code and we move on to the next question in the eighth question we are given a string which consists of alphabets in a particular pattern and we have to check if the string consists of three consecutive same characters and written the number of variables required to separate the condition and these are the two conditions which you have to check and we have to provide the minimum number of characters okay, to separate the first condition. So to proceed with we declare a as an input variable 
to obtain the string and we declare an empty array in addition to this we declare condition as an integer variable of value 0 we do so in order to calculate the number of characters required to separate consecutive to three variables we could simply use array is equal to list of a in order to convert a string to a list but i don't know if that is effective in order to separate each respective character present in a given string thus we use a for loop which iterates each character and stores it in an array we could achieve it by using the append function in order to store the values and in order to check if there are three consecutive terms we declare a for loop in the range of the length of the string a which is subtracted by 2 we do this because in the respective for loop we declare an if condition where we check if the array of the particular index position is equal to the next index position and the second index position after that and if that is true we increment the value of the condition here as we check for the in the additional two index position of the array we limit the range of the for loop by the difference of two as we cover those spaces using the if loop if we don't use this statement we would we could possibly encounter an error as list index out of range in order to prevent those conditions we use these kind of con statements and finally we print the value of condition code and we head to the next question in the last question of this tutorial we are given with a string which is rather a weird id or a roll number and we are required to calculate the sum of the integer values present in this and return it at the end of the alphabet or characters present in the string so we declare a as an input variable and we declare or in order to increment the sum of each integer value present in the given input and we declare an for loop which maps to each character in the variable a and we declare an if loop inside the for loop where we check if the value of i is integer we could do this by using the try and expect condition but this is an alternate way where we could check it against the character of all the numbers possible so if the value i is in the list of the numbers we increment the value or to that particular value thus we add or to the integer value and at the end we would print the total sum of all the integer values present in the string and if it is not an integer we print the value itself in a manner where we don't disturb the occurrence of the alphabets or string characters present in the input and thus and thus we submit the code and we obtain positive results that's it for today all the code we have done here is available in the description below and if you are new to my channel please subscribe and enable the bell icon to receive regular updates regarding problem solving using python in various platforms like hacker rank and code cutter thanks and we will meet soon in the next video